Hey, it's Tony Bruski, and this is our Week in Review. Over the weekend, taking a look back at some of the most compelling conversations and stories that we've covered for you of the last week. Brand new episodes back Monday morning, bright and early, 5 a.m. here on the podcast. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruski, Featuring trial consultant and body language expert, Susan Constantine. Lots of questions coming up. Uh, Tony Liggett, the uh, Carroll County Sheriff, uh, under the microscope, especially with the 36-page document that the defense of Richard Allen has put out, uh, pointing out a lot of areas where it appears Tony just either completely ignored evidence, put it away, or lied and said that, uh, well, I don't know who that is who said that, or we can't find them, and then it turns out you can find the experts that they spoke to. It just didn't speak to what he wanted. What's your take on this case, where it sits right now? It's not a a very strong case against Richard Allen, but the Odinistic stuff almost goes into extremely fantastical territory. Yeah, what what we're finding is that just in the world in itself is that there is so much deception that's going on. Yeah. It's hard to know, even know what truth is. Right. Yeah. So there's cover-ups, there's documents that go missing, right. Mm -hmm. Reports that go missing. They just don't go missing because they go missing. Mm -hmm. They're going missing because somebody is hiding them. So that, and if they're, if they're hiding them, what is in those documents that doesn't want to be revealed? Because there's a lot of incriminating information that might link different people to these, to the case. So, you know, the, I hate, I'm not a, a conspiracy theorist, but more and more I see stuff like this, like going, what happened with you know, the, when you take a take an oath that says, I'm going to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And I want to say, I believe the very end of that was says, I'm going to tell you everything, nothing but the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> or not, not the truth. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's been shocking. It's another case here where it kind of goes to the pillars of power in a community wanting to be able to trust them and, and their expertise and their judgment. But there seems to be a lot in this case that doesn't add up at all. And take, even if Odinism is an extreme thing here, and I know there's been no documented cases of Odin is sacrificing people or anything like that. That's another thing that makes it so extreme. But at the same point, it's, it, there are some receipts to some of these claims that are being made in that, in that filing. Yeah. And you know what? I do believe that. I think that there are these cultic practices that are out there that you and I aren't privy to. There are the secret underground clubs Mm -hmm. and they're satanic. You know, they are a lot of satanic movements that are happening and self uh, sacrificing and so forth. And it's, it's very disturbing when you realize that were these children targeted or I think it was just really more of an opportunistic for the, in the yep. Delphi yeah. murders is that they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And here is somebody that scooped him up and did they, he belong to this type of a group. I think that there, we can't dismiss it. Mm-hmm. I think that there is some truth to that. Either way, when you look at it, when we try to figure out motive here of Richard Allen, there doesn't seem to be one at all. And if you look at it from the, if we're going to go down the Odinistic route of, well, this seems somewhat premeditated, but how could you premeditate something like this where you don't know the equation that these girls are going out for a walk that afternoon? And then just, well, you know. Who knows? I mean, you know, the scary thing is, you know, Tony, is that I don't want to have your re- your listeners think that there's a boogeyman behind every corner, <laughs> but there are a lot of boogeymen out there. And, you know, what kind of a person just goes walking down those railroad tracks in the middle of the all by himself, right? He's, yeah. You know, what is he doing? Going for a walk? Does he regularly go for a walk there? Mm-hmm. Is that something he normally does? Or was he, you know, is, you know, like a like an animal just waiting for the right opportunity. And then that the only motive, if it were true about this cultic practice would be only for that reason for the, for 
to perform these, you know, types of cultic practices and sacrifices. So it wouldn't be a money motive. Mm -hmm. It would be for some sort of high leveling movement up within that cultic organization. We don't know. I know there's not a lot that really links them to them, but I also have a guy that's on my team that specializes in cult practices Mm -hmm. and they do happen more than what you think. And there is a group of people and they can look very normal. This is why when we look at the the Giglow murders, Mm -hmm. it's like they can live these completely normal lives. This is what fascinates me is that who are you brushing shoulders with when you're walking into a grocery store Mm -hmm. or you're in a, you know, going to an event, how many times have we literally brushed by somebody that could have been or is a serial killer or in sort of some sort of deviant sexual practices and, and that sort of thing. I mean, I think that, you know, that population has grown and there are, these types of people that are preying on the right opportunities. And I think that this is truly happening. You know, Nancy Grace once told me, and I can't remember, she said it was 2,500 people go missing every year. Mm -hmm. Or she says day, I can't recall. And I don't know if that was global or whether that was just nationwide. Sure. If you imagine you know, flying over your state or the United States at nighttime and every person that was an offender, sexual offender or like a serial murder or murderer had their lights on, mm-hmm. it would look like Christmas. <laughs> That's a night. fun Nancy Grace thought. <laughs> well, I know. It's true, but, you know. It's true, but it's true and scary at the same time. And yeah, that's a good analogy that that really that is. Uh, I I think one of the the scary aspects of this, you're talking, you know, earlier, there there are boogeymen out there. There's more than we think there are. But what is we're seeing more and more of, I think, is the boogeymen like getting together. And there's one boogeyman that's communicating with the other boogeyman. And you have a whole bunch of boogeymen and they're all kind of consorting and conniving and creating uh, some of these systems, I guess, if you will want to call it that. Uh, in areas uh, as a collective. It's not just there's this one over here in the corner. Those ones certainly exist, but uh, we see them even institutionally. Uh, it seemed like even we were talking about the Maya case, uh, the boogeymen in, in that sort of a setting, that they're when they work together, it, it creates like a, a mega super monster boogeyman. Yeah, I think we've, we're, we're living in a different time now, and I think that everybody feels it. Mm-hmm. You know? It's not that we can ignore it any longer. There's a lot of really crazy stuff that's going on in the world. And, um, and I don't know what has, has kind of fueled it. I don't know, but I know it's there and we cover these kind of cases and we're, I don't know if it's because some of that is becoming more aware and they were always there. Mm -hmm. And that's one school of thought. Or that somehow there, this the human depravity has grown so rapidly that we have become desensitized to having emotion or feeling or empathy for other people. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, it, it's. I mean, they're objects. They're you know, you think about like the Giglow murders, yeah. and also the BTK killer. You know, I yeah. had an opportunity to, when I was at crime con just last month and I met Carrie yeah. Raider mm-hmm. and, and, you know, was able to have some really good conversations with her. And then when you think about just even that, that now he was a solo guy, right? Mm-hmm. But my point was when I was bringing up is that these guys, the new type of killer or sexual deviant they have these either organizations, underground organizations, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then they also um, can live a perfectly normal life. Mm-hmm. They look like you or I functioning in the world, like in a 
a regular job that everybody admires him. He's the person has been a good worker. Nothing really stands out about him. They have a family, they have children. Yeah. And then that's like, that's the job by day. And then by night they turn into a vampire, you know? Yeah. With, With a support system of other vampires. Yeah. With other vampires that are just really getting off on this stuff. Yeah. So where is that really coming from? I, you know, personally, I think I am, you know, going to go, I'm going to go out on a limb and just say, if people don't realize that there is truly evil, evil, and I mean, not evil in the world, I mean, just evil forces, mm-hmm. you're, sat, you're really not being honest with yourself. There is truly an evil force that is somehow inhabited these types of people that are there being able to do the things that they've done without a sort of conscious or repercussion of it. And that's what I think. Sick of the ads? We opt to. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.